Hey everybody, this is From the Vine with John and Fish. How you guys doing? We got a special guest with us here today. Hey. And it's Jeff Tripoli. Uh, hey guys. He's with the Town Pants and Wabi Sabi. And uh, we're going to talk a lot about his music, but before I want to give you a little intro on Jeff. Tripoli's drumming reflects a wide background of independent musical influences. At the root of his dynamic framework resides the deep passion to provide fresh rhythms and artistic perspective. On the road and in the studio, Tripoli performs with Celtic folk rockers, the town pants, a consistent audience favorite with Celtic folk and world and Irish and even rock festivals throughout the United States, Canada, and Europe. That's, That's what pretty they impressive. Say. Wow, yeah. dude. That's what they say. <laughs> and he's awesome. here yeah, right Thanks, now. guys. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. This is great. Yeah. Thank and you. Are you a native to Syracuse? I am. I was born and raised in Syracuse. Okay. Um, I did, however, live in Ithaca for four years All right. back in the early 2000s. And you had a description yeah. of Ithaca that I thought was pretty. Uh, cool. it's, uh, it's like a big village. I wouldn't say it's a city, but it's like a big village. That's right. Yeah. Everybody mm -hmm. knows each other here. Everything's really in good driving distance. You can get anywhere within like 15 minutes. And it and <laughs> depends on the one-way roads uh, and if things are all working. But yes. Yeah. I, Construction, It took of me a while to get used to those roads. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. But I've, I'm born and raised in Syracuse, in East Syracuse. Okay. And went to uh, high school out there and uh, attempted to go to college, but didn't really work out for me. Okay. So I started playing music. That's awesome. Yeah. That's a lot of similar, uh, uh, many similar stories of people I know who go off to college, like at Belmont or Juilliard, and they end up just playing in bands and... Oh, right. A lot of times they don't make it out of college. That's an expensive uh, experience trip there. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. So you just told us about yourself. Uh, but yeah, you went us, right into that. Yeah, that you just, like, oh, yeah. <laughs> we, we usually ask that question right off the bat, but you nailed yeah. it. I can go a little bit deeper. Uh, yeah, been, go for it. Well, I've been playing drums since I was 10 mm -hmm. and started playing with uh, local bands around, you know, high school band and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And eventually I started playing with this guy, Jamie Noter Thomas, mm -hmm. and that introduced me to the road like back in 2001. Okay. Something like that. And then eventually um, moved to Ithaca to play with a Zydeco band called Blue Sky Mission Club. Oh, that's awesome. And we had a side project that played funk. We were called Free Booty Institute. Oh, that's yeah. a great name. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Shout out to uh, London and Frank Henry. I okay. want to give a shout out to those guys. And uh, through that, also, I noticed one of your past guests was Way. Yes. And so uh, Rob Delphis from Blue Sky Mission Club was helping him out with Muse Fest. So right. yeah, shout out to Way, too. Hi, Way. Hey, Way. <laughs> we love Way. Way is one of the funniest people I've ever met. Yeah. yeah. Um, so after playing with the Zydeco band, I met the Town Pants. We opened up for them a few okay. times. And from there, uh, you know, the rest is history. I typed them up on Facebook and got into the band. And it was nice knowing them before I got into the band to really know their music first. Sure. Yeah. So, yeah. And then I'm, I'm here. And that was about six years ago. I joined the Town Pants. And it's been crazy ever since. Wow. <laughs> so crazy, like lots of touring. Yes, a lot of touring. Okay. Um, well, that's something we got to talk about. Mm -hmm. Is yeah. I saw something on the Town Pants website, and there's some sort of bus tour happening in Scotland. Mm. Yes. So if you would, yeah. that sounds really interesting to me. Yeah, tell us about that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, the Town Pants have organized through Hammond Tours that you can sign up to come on a bus with the band and all the fans that sign up to come with us. And we go on a tour of Scotland all around the nice places, the castles, and we hit up all the pubs at night. And usually the gig winds up us being sitting around a table in a pub, just jamming on instruments. And uh, yeah. it was beautiful because we did have one particular gig where there was a full drum set and a stage and a PA system. Okay. So looking out at the audience at that time, seeing all of our friends from Hawaii, from Texas, from Canada, from New York, from Ohio, Pennsylvania, all in the same room together okay. was really awesome. No wow. words cannot describe it. That's amazing. So we did this in Ireland back in 2018, I think, or 2017, and we're doing it again for Scotland at the end of October. That's so cool. Yeah. Wow. So if you're a fan, you can just like you sign up for this thing, um, and you just like you pay the fee and you just, you do it and you like get to hang yeah. with the town pants. Yeah. So you cool. get that experience. So yeah. we, were, we were talking yeah. about. I think it's brilliant. Uh, it is brilliant. Yeah. It's it's such and we were talking about John and I earlier. We were thinking of like a theme for the show and. There's something about creating memorable experiences for fans. Oh, yeah. And we want oh, yeah. to really dive into that a little more, right? And yeah. And get to the heart of like how you can do that and why that's so important, especially nowadays, mm -hmm. for fans to have those experiences. Sure. You really got to start reaching outside the box when it comes to being creative. You know, these days, mm -hmm. there's so much music. Everybody knows it's saturated, but mm -hmm. 
what separates you from the rest. <laughs> you sound is, like fish. <laughs> we talk about this almost on every Fantastic, show. Fantastic, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, well, great minds think alike, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so, well, you know, this is um, not a new topic. This is something that other bands have done. A lot of Irish Celtic bands, um, Enter the Haggis, uh, Young Dubliners, I believe, have done it. Um, the mm-hmm. Elders, there's a lot of them out there that have done it really mm-hmm. successfully, too. And it's a lot of fun. I mean, we went to the Guinness factory with all of our friends and fans. And, you know, at that point, <laughs> <I'm> so jealous. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's it goes above friends and fam or friends and fans. It becomes family at that point, And that's okay. really the experience that you get from coming with. us. Well, with all yeah. that Guinness, you're family immediately. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. So, you know, talking about that, one of the things we try to do with this show and also with New Vine, which is uh, if anybody doesn't know, we're a not for profit group. We try to get new artistry into the scenes out there and give them an opportunity with good production and whatnot, maybe even a little artist development. But one of the things that we try to enforce is like, hey, this this is going to be a career path for you. You've got to find some innovative ways to create a sustainable reality for yourself. And this is brilliant because it's not just about your fans that you're depending on. And if if it is, they're coming in, you're pulling them into a tour in Scotland or in Ireland. People just want to go there. And so yeah. how, how many people have gone on that and become a fan of the band as a result? Well, there was a few that had never heard us before that were brought along by um, their mother or their sister or their brother or father bought them the ticket and said, sure. hey, you're coming with us. And they're like, oh, cool. I get to go to Ireland or Scotland. And oh, my God, who are these guys? What? Mm-hmm. Who, what, the, what is this? <laughs> what is this thing? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And yeah, they become fans that way too. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, it's funny. I I think people think they have to have millions to support their sustainable reality and music. But we were talking about, you just need a good thousand people that are hardcore fans. That's absolutely true. To kind of carry what you do. That's true. Um, Mm -hmm. There's so many times that we see the same faces in the crowd and they've been there for 20, 30 shows. Mm -hmm. And it's become, like I said, family at that point. And it just becomes like such a community vibe that you really wonder like why don't other people do this <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah uh, granted it is an expensive um it takes a lot, of, a lot of work to, it takes a lot of to work. put something like that together a lot of logistics mm-hmm. absolutely um which i i find through my experiences that that's always the achilles heel for yeah. bands is logistics yep. you know? right and and a lot of bands are just not good at that and mm-hmm. some are great at it some are in the middle but i think more often than not it's a different part of the brain to, to, you know, figure out logistics of how do we get here? What time do we need to leave? And et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, yeah. that might be like, maybe one of the reasons why it's not something that everybody's jumping at to do. True. However, with Hammond Tours, they take care of all that for you. Oh, so okay. nice, there's a nice little plug for Hammond. I like it. <laughs> there's a whole itinerary of uh, <laughs> right. when you are supposed to be on the bus and when it leaves. Okay. And where it's going. Don't miss the uh, <laughs> the leave time. Yeah. Wow. Don't that, miss the bus. It's kind of like a cruise a little bit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Kind of, except you can get off the you can get off the bus. <laughs> you can't get off the ship. <laughs> yeah. So um, tell me about nostalgia and this. Nostalgia. Does it mm. play into the psychology of your fans with absolutely. these experiences? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I would say the good and the bad. Um, we've had some of our fans see us play at the best shows and some of the, I'm not going to say worst because no, there's no right. such thing as a worst show, but there is a weird show. <laughs> That's <laughs> a good way to say that. Yeah. yeah. Maybe an awkward show. Oh, uh, sometimes uh, I yeah. think the we- awkward would be a subdivision of weird. Uh, I think that's fair. So yeah. <laughs> familiarity can breed contempt. Familiarity can breed contempt. Well, depends on who's breeding. I guess. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, we were talking about how nostalgia often uh, with artists and their music, it's kind of like you want them to have the soundtrack of their life be your music. Yeah. So this plays into that, do you think? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Especially for the Ireland trips and and the Scotland trips. It's like Mm -hmm. the soundtrack to the whole thing. We'll even play on the bus while it's moving. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I wow. kind of want to go on this tour. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> let's go. Yeah. Let's do yeah. It. Let's, let's do all it. go. New Vine trip. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Let's, <laughs> let's get to this. Let's get to this next uh, song here. It's actually the first song that we're gonna play. Sure. And this yeah. is "Monkey Run" by the Town Pants. Yes, it is. And uh, I guess tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, I know for a fact that this song was written about a true story okay. of I forget who exactly it was, but somebody's grandfather 
was uh, during the prohibition time at a party and had an illegal at the time crate of rum, mm. homemade rum. Oh my. In Corning, New York. Hmm. Which is not far from here. No. Uh, not far. And the ho- the whole story goes that <clears throat> Monkey Run was the name of the creek that ran through the town and he had to get over the creek to get home. Wow. But it was uh, stormy and so he got caught in the creek and the only thing saving him was holding on to the crate of rum so he wouldn't this is amazing. Wouldn't sink. Oh, that's kind of cool. <laughs> I like that. Wow. And uh, he was saved by a train passing by, and they stopped, and they got him, and he had to pay off the cops with uh, the crate of rum. Oh. To get home, and with uh, contraband. With contraband, but they kept. Uh, they left him one to keep him warm, as the lyrics. Oh, that's says. nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a great story so, so as uh, as the brothers david and Dwayne keogh would say <clears throat> as they always do on stage that this is a, bo- a song about holding on to the things that are really important to you okay i love that yeah. well yeah. this is uh the town pants and we're gonna play monkey run My name is Ross Mitchell, I must tell you of my day I have to blame the government for they took our booze away I left the car at party with a case of homemade rum But one misstep and suddenly I'm stuck in Monkey Run The worst thing that could happen is you're stuck in Monkey Run We engineers were working hard, we in the corning town Suddenly a voice out of the dark, we turned around We saw Mitchell floating there, his arms around the crate Together we decided not to leave him to his fate Hold on, only here for a while Hold on, to all that makes you smile Life is tough enough, you need to have a little fun The worst thing that can happen is you're stuck in Monkey Run The worst thing that can happen is you're stuck in Monkey Run I'm Sergeant Bill and there I was, the first one on the scene Well Mitchell was no worse for wear but looked a little green He paid his bail in bottles to keep him warm, I left him one I know I'd want the same if I'd been stuck in Monkey Run The worst thing that can happen is you're stuck in Monkey Run uh, Wow. And there you have it. That is fun. Let's go! Oh, it's still playing! <laughs> so it kind of reminds me of the Proclaimers a little bit. Cool. Probably yeah. the worst thing you wanted to hear. <laughs> well, they are Canadian as well. <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah, okay. the town pants are mostly Canadian. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Where, whereabouts are they? They're from Canada, right? Yeah. Uh, David and Dwayne Keo uh, were born and raised in Ottawa, but they lived for quite some time in Vancouver. Okay. Mm. Yep. You know, there's a monkey run here in Ithaca. There's um, a trail, a hiking cool. trail called Monkey Run. We got to yeah. get a keg of beer and just kind of try this out yeah. on Monkey yeah. Run. When we were at Great Blue Heron Festival... We changed the words to Dragon Run, which is one of the trails back in the woods. Yeah. yeah. Smart. Yeah. That's kind of nice. Way to play can... the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say, it's nice when you can tailor, tailor the songs to like where you are, and it, it kind of adds to the whole, mm-hmm. the whole experience of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Especially when we play that song in Corning. It's pretty fun. People, like the guy you know, that his dad was, or his grandfather was written about, he goes crazy every time. <laughs> I bet. Yeah. Well, it's funny. My mom used to tell me about Corning when she was going to college. And it was the town to go drink in, apparently. Corning the drink in. And it had wow. the most consecutive bars in a row in New York State in Guinness Book World of Records. Nice. Guinness Book of World Records. I think so. Wow. This is what I've been told by my mom, and she doesn't lie. So okay. Wow. Um, That's it, a pub crawl right it, there. It was right? a pub crawl. <laughs> apparently, it was Literally the longest run of bars. Literally a crawl. You will be crawling <laughs> yeah. from pub to pub by the end. Yeah. You'll was, start running, but by the end, you'll be crawling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're actually carrying you at that point. <laughs> so uh, this is the segment. Oh, no. Are we doing it? We're doing it. Uh, this is the strange okay. candy segment. Oh, no. We've been doing this strange on our candy. show. Why are we doing it? <laughs> Because we love candy. It's true. We have a love for candy. Fish specifically, I think, was called a snacker, a snacker. by the infamous Michael Wu. And yeah. Michael apparently listens to this podcast from time to time. So thank you, Michael. But we're going to hit Strange Candy. And you know what? This candy sound. is very nostalgic for me. Because when I was in Little League and we won a game, our coach would buy us all Swedish fish. Swedish fish. Yeah. Awesome. So I can open it. This isn't <laughs> as strange as some of the candies we brought. Place your hand over yes. here, sir. Yeah, so for all of you foodies out there. <laughs> oh, oh, that's I, a like lot. all of them. I just, oh. I just, apparently I hit a home run. Are you, uh, I'll you take don't, there's one. no pressure. There's no pressure. I'll yeah. do, I'll do one. You do one? Yeah. Okay. We're gonna, it's raining fish. Yeah, sometimes sugar's not the best friend of mine, but. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll do a half. Okay, so what we do is we eat the candy on the microphone. We're all to share. We share. Yeah. 
Oh gosh. Mm. Mm. I'm having flashbacks of my coach screaming at me. <laughs> There's also a big version of this. We have the mm. we have the minis. You know what? The big ones don't mm. taste the same. The big ones don't taste the same, do no. they? No. They Almost got, like they're diluted. Like a chalky taste. Mm. This is the good stuff. Right. <laughs> Swedish fish. Yeah. And that was the shortest <laughs> segment of strange candy we've ever yes. done. How <laughs> it was strange. short, but but it was amazing good. at the same yeah. time. Mm. Tasty. We mm. like to we like to take a little bit of a break from the music talk just to mix it up a little bit. Yeah. Because you know? yeah. sometimes and we just like to eat candy. We yeah. Let's just be honest. We like to do that too. <laughs> okay. Any excuse. Um mm-hmm. so but Jeff was kind Jeff was kind enough to bring us. Mm-hmm. Here's a camera. Hey, there it is. They got dual cameras on this. This is the Wabi Sabi. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna get into Wabi Sabi because Jeff, this mm. I actually I reviewed this record. You did. Thank you so much for your words too. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, yeah. and I, I enjoyed this record as a as a drummer myself right. and yeah percussionist back in high school doing great tim- picture timpani the and triangle uh bells all that stuff and nice cool man it just yeah it had this tribal feel to it nice and yeah and it's, it's just fun it kind of kind of gets you really down to the roots of you know rhythm and music and mm. yeah so let's Thank just so jump much. in man tell us tell us about this record uh yeah tell us about the wabi yeah well um i'll start off with the title's meaning uh, wabi sabi is actually traditional Japanese term for um, beauty within the imperfections. Oh, right. I, was, I think it was sounds watching. just like our show. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, seems pretty perfect to me here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> thanks, all. <laughs> nice place. Yeah. So, um, you know, I think it was really just the term like wabi sabi could be used to describe like Keith Richards, as I heard. Uh, I think David Lee Roth said it on Joe Rogan. Huh. Uh, or that perfect pair of worn jeans that just fit really well. Oh, I know that. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's embracing the imperfections and um, the organic vibe is kind of what I went with on that. You That's know, awesome. I didn't want to do anything like quantizing these beats or anything like that, editing or any that at all. It was all, if I needed to change something, I went back and played it the way it's supposed to be. Nice. So when I demoed this record, I would just basically sit in the basement, hit record, and just whatever came out, came out, Mm -hmm. and then build on top of that. And eventually, I had, you know, enough tracks that I could start whittling away, Mm -hmm. sort of like sculpting. Yeah. And really, if something needed to be recorded again, I just recorded it again after listening to it. Very old school. Look at you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's that is an old school kind of mentality. Um, I really wanted to keep yeah. that. Yeah. It reminds me of, I don't know if you've seen the documentary, uh, The Wrecking Crew. Oh, yeah. So oh, yeah. you got all these old guys that were part of that, and they're all bitching about Pro Tools and, <laughs> oh, yeah. and the grid. And, you know, yeah. Hell Blaine. It's, it's, Hell Blaine. Yeah. Oh. I mean, it, it's a beautiful doc. If you haven't seen it, you really got to watch it. But that's really, <clears throat> really impressive that you did that and were committed to that. Um, I haven't listened to this yet, so I'm looking forward to that. But when we cool. produce here, I, I do I do whole takes I, and I comp them together and I try not to right. to do that because you just want that natural yeah. response. When you start moving beats around, you start yeah. changing the feel of it. Yeah. yeah. And triplets become something else and eighth notes become or even the nuance else. Yeah. Of, of that, just the feel. Exactly. Right? It's, yeah. Um, and, and I feel nuance is lost in, in modern totally. music. Totally. Yeah. One of my favorite bands is Steely Dan. Mm. Rick Morota, the drummer f- that played on Peg, talks a lot about the nuances that came through specifically on the hi hat part. Mm-hmm. And how even at that time it was a lost art. They weren't being captured. Nobody really cared about that little layer that you can barely hear underneath the notes. Right. But it changes the song. It's the feel mm-hmm. of it. And yeah. it's everything. For instance, Fish, you know, you're a drummer. Oh, I know. With the ghost notes on a snare drum, yeah. that's 80% of the feel. Right. It's a lot of the feel. Yeah. Yeah. Just like some stuff that, yeah, it, you're not really thinking about what you're playing as the ghosts because it, it kind of just happens naturally. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, it's well, a tough concept to, 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 to teach. Convey, to teach. You know, I, I, I'm trying to, how did you, like, was there a formal... Um, sort of lesson you ever had on ghost notes, or no? So we're gonna get a little nerdy with the with the drums. Yeah, let's, yeah, do, let's do it. I love that. Let's <laughs> just, dive in. Just this is little, why I love the bit. drumming brotherhood. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, I didn't really have any formal education at all, except for 
playing music and playing along with it. So to go a little bit further back on where I come from as a musician, when I was 10 years old, it was 1993. And Nirvana just played on MTV live and loud. Mm-hmm. And that, I know that I know that broadcast. Yeah. That's a beautiful broadcast. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, for me, it was all about just capturing the natural organicness. And yeah, you, what if Nirvana was quantized? Yeah. You know, so you think about that. And then I think about how do I learn feel? Well, I just copy what I hear. Mm-hmm. That's the great thing about drums is you could teach yourself just by hearing what's played on the record. And then I went to John Bonham. Uh, I was just going to bring this up. Absolutely. Yeah. I, every drummer has to go through the John Bonham corridor. <laughs> you must. There's no escaping it. Well, um, do you know Rick Beato? Absolutely. Okay. I he, love Rick He Beato. literally breaks this down. I'm t- Linda Levy breaks. Yeah. He, he put it the into groove. Pro Tools. He put it in the Pro Tools. <laughs> he goes, okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to quantize John Bonham ah! on Linda Levy breaks. <laughs> oh, and you're going to listen and you're going to look at your computer and you're going to want to puke. And uh. <laughs> he literally did. He gritted it out. <clears throat> and the beat comes on and it's unintelligible. You, you can't even recognize the song. I got to go listen to this now. And it's go hilarious. Cry yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's not if you build it, they will come in that position. You know, there's no Jack White coming across the boards once you quantize things. <laughs> we, uh, are, are, you're, you're not referencing that skit, are you, from Portlandia? You mean Fred Armisen? Yeah. Yes. We, that's like the third time we that skit has this. come up on this oh, yeah. show. <laughs> That was the <laughs> one. Yeah. Yeah, as I used on Pet Sounds. <laughs> <laughs> These keys, they were on Pet You guys Sounds. have seen Stand Up for Drummers, right? On Netflix? I have not. So yeah, I saw it. Oh. Yeah. I liked it, mm. but I was not, like, I'm not going to rave about it. But, it. but it was relatable. Like, if you're a drummer, right. you'll get it. If yeah. you're not a drummer, mm. you're, just, you're not going to get it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, but uh, small niche. To go back to the feel thing. Sure. Um, as soon as I started getting into other music besides just Led Zeppelin and Rush and, yeah. and the Who and the uh, obvious ones, uh, going into like Steely Dan was a real schooling for me itself because I learned how to play along with like Royal Scam and all those records, you know, and that's Bernard Purdy who has his own shuffle named after him, you know? Wow. So feel it to me is 90%. Or no, I'm sorry, 50% feel, 50% groove, if I have to mm-hmm. you know, put it some way. Um, and I have to uh, really give a shout out to my mentor, drummer Butch Norton, who plays with Lucinda Williams and, and played in the Eels. And he's been my mentor, and he's taught me so much. And the, one of the first things he taught me was it's all groove and feel. Mm. Nothing else is really... I mean, there's obvious things. I, w- I want to bear down on that just a little bit. Sure. Uh, going back to the John Bonham thing um, and Led Zeppelin. I saw a live uh, release from them. It was a DVD. You've seen them. I'm sure, I'm sure you've seen it. I think it was at Madison Square Garden. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and it was the most amazing live capture I've ever heard of the band. Um, and the thing that really impresses me, going back to what you're talking about, is not only is the drummer doing that, which, by the way, that was Zoe. That was his son playing on that Yeah, one. yeah. Jason. Right. Yeah. And, um, but the band itself is stacking on that feel. Right. Which is a rare thing, which I don't think a lot of people understand, which is why mm. the Wrecking Crew was such a cool thing, because they were on every album, because they together could do the nuanceical, beautiful musical thing. Right. Yeah. And that's just not really found today in a no. lot of music. No. You know, it's like if you get mm-hmm. a jigsaw puzzle, mm-hmm. you know, all the pieces are different. They're all different shapes, but they all fit together in a certain way. Mm. But if all the pieces and shapes are square, you know, that's really boring. Yeah. So it goes back to the quantizing thing that, you know, when I made Wabi Sabi, I knew I didn't want to go in there and move beats around. I wanted Mm -hmm. to replay it correctly. Mm -hmm. And yeah, this was a really interesting process for me because the whole record took about a year from hitting record the first time to like having the CD out. Mm -hmm. And it was all done by me, completely um, self produced. Nice. And I do have three guest collaborations on here. Um, right, you mentioned uh, Butch Norton. Yeah, right. It was one. Yep. What are the What were the other ones? Jeff Tatora from Syracuse originally, but now he lives out in Las Vegas. He plays with the Blue Man Group. Oh, oh wow! Yep. And uh, there's another drummer who you may or may not know, uh, Griffin Brady from Sly Boot Circus. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, he uh, he hosted the drum circle at Great Blue this week or this year. Okay. And he's a fantastic drummer. He's based out of the Buffalo Jamestown area. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, it, to have the collaborations is really important to me, not to get somebody on there that's a, a name, but just to work with other drummers and collaborate is really 
mm. the whole key to why I'm doing this. Mm. You know, to be able to have like this record and show people what I'm capable of and ask, would you like to also do this? And, you know, it's a give and take. Yeah. I feel bad for people because um, they're missing out on what different people can sound together in, yeah. in that experimental yeah. way, the way we used to listen to music in the 90s. Yeah, especially when it's improvised. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Not to say this isn't happening today, because it's definitely happening, but it seems like it's less to me. You know. Yeah. There's, there's yeah. definitely more, yeah. more of the like solo artist in their bedroom with, because you can have all the gear you need in your bedroom. And you can listen and you can to make it. your own stuff without yeah. right. anybody if, and have it sound really amazing too. Y- and you can listen right. to that and go, "Wow, this is amazing!" But there's something sterile about. Mm. Oh, this yeah and i can't put my finger on it and i think it's this element that you're talking about yeah oh. i want to get back just real yeah. quick to wabi sabi and and the album as a whole mm. and the project sure. as a whole and just tell us what you like most about it Ooh, what i like most about it is oh, man it's like asking who's my favorite child um mm. i think surprising myself at what i did because as part of this was really improvised, I really had no idea what it was going to turn out like. And especially when I'm re-recording songs, um, just not knowing what it's going to be until it's there. Mm-hmm. And then once it becomes like a found, once there's a foundation to what happens, then I can build on top of that. And to answer your question even deeper, I think what I really loved the most about this record was I created some of my own instruments out of, you know, huh. household items. Um, for instance, I took... Uh, mixing bowls and marbles and I spin them around in the bowl and I hit the bowls and <laughs> hit the bowls. Uh, anyway, <laughs> nice. and also I k- took this big piece of wood <clears throat> and I took a can and some wire and stretched it across and used guitar tuning pegs on one side. That's crazy. Um, wrap, and wrap, wrapping my head around this. I'm picturing it right now. There's a picture of it on the back of the record. You what? can see it. Let's see. On the corner here. Oh, I see that. Yeah. Wait, which corner? It's right here. Oh. Yeah, it's. Uh, Whoa. I call it the hammer slide. It's kind of like a oh, hammer dulcimer see. meets a slide <laughs> guitar. <laughs> and the big influence behind that was this composer named Harry Parch. Okay. Um, and most people are not familiar with him, but he was uh, a composer that uh, really was uh, born in 1901, and he was a train jumping hobo during the Depression era. So through that time, he would do odd jobs to earn money, and that would be like rebuilding somebody's front porch. Mm. So three, he, he had a carpentry skill. And with that, when he got done trumping trains and all that stuff, he created his own instruments. Mm-hmm. Yeah, wow. like really elaborate instruments. That's so cool. Um, and you can hear it on his recordings. He's also using um, a microtonal scale. So okay. let's see. I'm not a melodic instrumentalist, but I believe an <laughs> octave has eight notes, right? That's correct. Yeah, yeah, I think that's what people are saying. Yeah. Okay. And Harry Parch's octave had 43 notes. Oh, my god! Yeah. Talk about, he must have had maybe perfect pitch. Uh, I don't know if. To uh, know how to. I think his influence behind that was basing the instrument off the human voice. Okay. Which, okay. Man, Mm -hmm. it's a deep dive, man. It is a deep Deep dive. Well, and that's, there's a lot of, I mean, Western Civ doesn't make room for these microtonal expressions. A lot of Eastern um, music theory is actually based around that. Yeah, yeah. And they train with that. And uh, our it's ears aren't so deep. Ac- accustomed to it. Right. Yeah. And when you first hear Harry Parch, you have to like adjust to it. <laughs> wow. It hits you. Sure, You're like, oh my sure. God, what is this? And then after about five seconds, it starts to line up and make sense to you. And you're like, oh my God, this is insane. Yeah. So that was a huge influence on me as well. Mm-hmm. And, you know, going back to like trying to do something different as well with this record, because making my own instruments, nobody's got that sound except me. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Well, and I I think when you're talking about um, having a shuffle named after you, right. um, We all do bring something to the table, which is, you know, we want to create value in music again. So one thing we talk about with artists is you are a completely original thing. Yeah. As a musician, no one's ever going to sound like you. So don't put it into a computer and change that. Right. You know, yeah. at least try to avoid that as much as possible. And I think that's what you're kind of hitting on is that you have a very original sound and you're encouraging others to do the same. Oh. Absolutely. Yeah. Go out there and be weird. Be, be different. Weirdo. I love that. Yeah. Be yeah. as weird as you can be. <laughs> <laughs> like that. It's true. I've seen some weird things that aren't so cool. But yes. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. a good point. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Right. Mm. 
<laughs> right? It's a That's great, a it's a gray area. I've seen some <laughs> weird things that are just not okay. So where do you see yourself uh, three months from now? Well, I'll be finishing up touring with the Town Pants. This is our last year touring. Oh, wow. We're ending it in Scotland. You know, I heard something about that. Huh. I heard yeah. that this may be the last, like, the last go around for the Town Pants. Yeah. They've been together for 25 years touring. Holy cow. Yeah. That's a lot. Well, there's the two brothers, Dave and Dwayne Keogh, that have been doing it for 25 years. Huh. Yeah. And also our fiddle player, Johanna. So she's um, been with the band about six years, just as long as I have. Mm -hmm. And she's from Alaska. And she has a great solo record coming out. So she's got that prospect going on for her. Mm. Dwayne has a really great acting career unfolding for him. So he's he's definitely going to do great with that. So mm. and plus, you know, 25 years of touring is really hard. <laughs> it's really hard. I yeah. thought it was easy. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> it's well. so much fun, but yeah, it's demanding. And so it takes its toll, you know? Mm -hmm. um, we, we were talking about that actually this mm. great point to to talk about and that you're bringing up is the touring thing being taking its toll on you with Rachel Beverly. Mm -hmm. She had like 50 shows in, what was it like three months? Uh, yeah, this, th this year. And yeah. she had double that last year. Right. So it's like, yeah. you, and we were talking about just mm -hmm. how do you, like, how do you handle yourself on the road to, to be sure that you're performing at your best and not getting burnt out, mm -hmm. you know, just yeah. like keeping it, yeah. keeping it together and yeah. it's not as glamorous as uh, one might <laughs> think, think it is so. no it's, it's very pragmatic actually. It, it, yeah. as dave keo would say it's not all hookers and blow right yeah right. <laughs> yes it's, it's a little true. bit <laughs> in the beginning <laughs> in the beginning you want to yeah. on saturday nights <laughs> <laughs> that gets old fast yeah but uh yeah mm -hmm. you know it, but as far as where i see myself in three on months saturday it's it, it's wrapping up the touring with the town pants but then i really yeah. want to find and all the bands out there that need a good drummer, look me up because mm -hmm. I want to start playing with a band and being in a touring band, a serious touring band, mm -hmm. a band that is uh, healthy. Oh, yeah. A band that I get along with. We need to do a show. What is a healthy band? Oh, my God. What yes. is a healthy band? What is a healthy yes. band? Yeah. Oh, what a good. Yeah, that's a great topic. Yeah, that could go anywhere. Yeah. But keep keep going. No, yeah, you're, keep going. This is good. Dude, yeah, you're, yeah, you're on. A, we're on to something. He's vamping. Here. Yeah. Well, I think the touring thing is really where I thrive. I just, I have to tour. And when I first put my first record out, Rhythm Cadence, the pandemic had just hit. I hate bringing it up because everybody brings it up, but it's mm -hmm. relevant. Yeah. And I just, without touring, I feel useless. Mm -hmm. um, I can barely make dinner. Just ask my <laughs> girlfriend. She'll tell you. <laughs> she always comes in and fixes it for me. We well, can, you, know, uh, you know your strengths. And yeah. I want to tell, to all the artists listening to this right now that like, uh -huh. What Jeff's doing right now, and and we want we want to help, we want to be support for local and even regional artists, and like that's why we're doing this podcast. Is like mm -hmm. we want to be a, a place where we can come and have an open forum and support each other. Um, you're saying what you want, you're putting it yeah. out into the universe what you want, and what I want is not oh I want a million dollars. Like it's more specific than that. It's like I yeah. want to be in a touring band that's healthy, that is all about the music, right? That right. that wants to work hard. Amen. All of that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> because some yeah. some Word. people if yeah. you can't hone in on what you want on that on on that specific level, mm -hmm. it's not going to happen. You have to be aiming at something. Mm -hmm. You and do. So yeah. I I res really appreciate that you're that you're just you you know what you want to go for. Mm -hmm. You're putting it out there. You're not ashamed of it, and and just take note, you know, because it's it's really yeah. something important that we thank do. you, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To me, it, you get in what you put out, mm -hmm. or I'm sorry, you you get back what you put into it. What's the term? I don't know, um, but <laughs> something like that. Yeah, no, I, I mean, hear that. the harder you work, the more benefits you reap. I, and ideally, though, ideally, you sow yeah. what you that, reap. That, that is a yeah. bit of a gray area. Though. <laughs> you reap what you sow. <laughs> yeah. No, sorry. I just, yeah. Yeah. Cause yeah. some, there's some very hardworking people out there that just sometimes other life shit happens and, and it doesn't, oh, doesn't yeah. pan out. So I just want to, yeah. I just want to modify that. It's mm -hmm. hard work is absolutely important, but it, mm -hmm. it does not, there is the, still that possibility that it, it just doesn't yeah. happen. Mm -hmm. It's also a big part of it is discipline, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, I think that's a big one. It's a huge one mm -hmm. for me, particularly. I, you know, I like to hang out and I'm a very social person. And, you know, there are certain things that I can't do before a show, but I can do after a show. Right. You know, whatever we that may be. We were just talking you know? about that today. Right. Yeah. Drinking. Oh, yeah. Just don't drink until after the show. Yeah. Especially I'm in an or Irish Or don't drink at all. Or don't drink at all. Yeah. I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I'm the, just going to say that. That was worth right? a shot. <laughs> yeah. 
there's a time and a place for everything. Sure. Um, so, you know, just having the respect for the music and the people you're working with is a huge thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in three mm -hmm. months time, hopefully I'll be playing and auditioning for other bands and doing more collaborations. Um, I've been reaching out to other drummers like Rich Mangicaro. He's the A&R representative for Gong Bops. He's also a Syracuse native, went to the same junior high school as me. And uh, also the drummer from Jack Johnson, Adam Topol. Damn. Um, and other drummers like uh, Kalani Das, who does a uh, world... Uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to screw up the name of his podcast. World Drumming Podcast or something. He's got a fantastic podcast. Sorry, Kalani, I screwed up the title. But it's all good. Just reaching out to other drummers. Like I said, the collaboration is the big benefit of doing my own record, mm -hmm. especially with other drummers. We all love to share and talk shop and give ide different ideas and trade ideas and steal from each other. So it's real brotherhood. And this is something that I'm really opening up for myself right now. Mm -hmm. um, and talking to other drummers like uh, Dom Famolero. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. He's um, that's a real big name in drumming if you're if you're in that circle. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, he's interviewed guys like Vinny Caliuta and Stuart Copeland. Yeah, yeah. Um, There's a video of him actually like He's so into his drumming. He's doing a drum solo, mm. and he swings the drumstick by his ear and actually knocks his glasses I've off seen of that. his face. Yeah. <laughs> it's really yeah. great. Oh, wow. And they play it in slow motion again, just yeah. in case you missed. It. <laughs> <laughs> it's wild. Mm. We should we should get that up maybe in yeah. post. Oh yeah, that's, that's cool. a great one. Vinny we'll throw it on the tail. We'll yeah, throw it on the tail. It's very funny. Um, <laughs> yeah. We we gotta we gotta move on. We're we're having okay. great discussions here. Mm. We yeah. We gotta thank keep you for having show. me, guys. Yes, absolutely. Um, we want to we want to play a, a track from Wabi Sabi. Okay, and we're just, we're gonna do a title track. Cool. Wabi Sabi. Wabi Sabi. There it is. <laughs> well, let me find it. Great man, you're a wealth of information. Oh man, it's all I do. Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. When I'm not playing, you don't cook, I'm though. studying. <laughs> uh, <no. laughs> I used to. I uh, tried to impress my fiance with cooking. Uh, yeah. She just laughed at me. Yeah. Because it is pretty. <laughs> com it, if when you really know how to cook, like she does, yeah, yeah. I, I was drinking a glass of wine and looking at my phone. She's like, "You, you, no, you can't, you can't do that." <laughs> she's pretty focused. Yeah, I mean, my girlfriend's awesome, so she's just yeah. she loves cooking and she's good at it. So, well, there yeah. you go. But I do come from an Italian family, so like my grandmother, her sauce was, you know, the bomb. Yeah, nice. Yeah, absolutely. Nice. <laughs> okay. Cool. I got a little got a little wabi sabi here for us, and then we'll. We're going to do the new Vine Reacts after this. All right. Okay. Wasabi. I actually, uh, the can that I use as the resonator on my quote unquote hammer slide instrument is a wasabi peas can. Well, there you go. <laughs> it all it comes was in there somehow. Circle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll have play on words. So totally. many layers. So, <laughs> we're going to do this thing called New Vine Reacts. New Vine Ooh. Reacts. Yes. Well, right. this, is, this is the part of the show where we pick apart the news and we're going to react to the news with you, hopefully. Yeah. Okay. What so, do we got? All right. Get ready. What to do if you see a shark. And this was an NPR story. Okay. It came out very recently. Mm -hmm. And there has been an increase in shark attacks in Long Island. Long Island? I believe it's been really? Long Island. I think it's uh, more than that. It's, it's happening all around. It's actually happening <laughs> everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. So wow. <laughs> <laughs> they're angry we're swimming in their pool. Yeah. Maybe? I, I don't know, man. We'll find out. <laughs> Why are they getting so close? So what I did here is... 
I just took out the bit about what you should do if okay. you run into a shark. Okay. I felt like that would be the most useful part of the story. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to put my Batman shark repellent on my belt here. <laughs> That's All a right. throwback anyway. So I'm going to I'm going to jump in and I I actually I'd love to have everyone here participate. So Yeah. I'm going to read the first bullet point. John will read the next, and we'll just kind of keep going. Okay. 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 Having said all that, there are some extra precautions you can take to better avoid an unwanted encounter with sharks. Don't swim between dusk and dawn. Don't go into the water alone. Avoid flashy (laughs) jewelry, which can be mistaken for fish scales. Oh, yeah. yeah. Don't go in if you have got an open wound. Now, if you've done your due diligence and still come face to face with a shark, the best thing you can do is remain calm. Easier said than done. Word. <laughs> Square up with the shark and don't take your eyes off the shark, Naylor said. Move purposefully while watching the shark back towards the shore. And if the shark gets too close for comfort or it tries to bite you, defend yourself. <laughs> Your best bet is to punch or kick the shark in the nose or gills. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Having said all of that, our fear of sharks is a bit out of proportion, Naylor said. Hmm. The odds of getting bit by a shark are a little less than one in four million, according to the International Shark Attack file. Or so they say. There's a file like that? Apparently. Wow. Hmm. In fact you're 10 times more likely to get killed by fireworks. <laughs> oh, no! Oh, Yo, that's crazy. Mm. <laughs> you're probably 200 times more likely to drown in the ocean than you are to get bitten by a shark, Naylor said. And I think that people aren't that worried about drowning. Mm. There you, you have know what? It. It, it, it. It's not the percentage. <laughs> it's the fact that you could. Right. Get killed by a yeah, shark. Yeah, but like if it's a like <laughs> it, one in four million and you're still, more likely to get killed by fireworks. I mean, right? Somehow dying um, by fireworks seems less traumatic. Especially <laughs> if, if you're in the water. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah, right. Oh, and that's and then you'd be okay, right? Yeah. Either way, you're going to die. So you might as well go out with some style, this, I, I mean, guess. What if you knew uh, when you were born how you were going to die and you found out that a shark was going to kill you? <laughs> That's just pretty horrible. That's pretty yeah. horrifying. Yeah. I don't think I'd want to know how I'm going to die. You're that lucky yeah. guy that got killed by a shark. <laughs> the lucky guy. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we wanted to relate this to music a little bit. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> first thing. What's the first thing that wow. comes to mind when uh, you... A lead, oh. Death by lead singer? Death by lead ah, singer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> did, was, was that, did that happen? Did oh, a singer die by a shark um, attack? Over a long period of time, most lead singers kill off their bandmates. <laughs> oh. oh, careful with the table knocks. <laughs> I would say uh, to elaborate a little bit on that, uh, I would say death by inexperienced or rude sound guy. Oh, true. Yeah. Ooh. Or about the grip, you know? Uh, how about the scaffolding? Death by scaffolding. Oh, okay. okay. Lights, yeah. lights falling. There was that show, A Thousand Ways to Die or something. Right? <laughs> oh, my God. Really? Yeah, I didn't hear about that. Like TLC or something, you know? The Learning <laughs> Channel. Yeah. Uh, Right. I haven't seen that. <laughs> no. uh, how about the guy with the camera? He, you know, you see them falling off the stage because they're not seeing where they're going. I've seen oh, like man. five of those videos this last year. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That yeah. seems like a very high. It's like a risky job, apparently. Uh, yeah. You got to watch where you're yeah. going. Yeah. Well, when I think of uh, music stuff, I think of Jaws, the theme from Jaws with oh. shark attacks. Oh, Doo-doo. I hear it now. Do do. Mm-hmm. Dude, dude, dude. <laughs> it's the I mean, only it's piano brilliant. song I know. I will throw it in later. <laughs> That's <laughs> how funny it is that you got that song as like your alarm clock in the morning. Yeah, the Jaws theme song. Yeah, that would get you out of bed, right? I think so. I'm a pretty heavy sleeper. I don't think I it would know, get me out of bed. I just start dreaming about being in the movie Jaws, probably. <laughs> probably. Yeah, right. It'd be scary that wake you wake oh. up from that. Those are pretty low. They probably put me to sleep even harder. Right? <laughs> yeah. So. But you know, in all fairness, wouldn't you see the shark's fin? circling you before it comes or would you be able to like see that as a warning to get out thus the lower rate of death yeah probably but right. there's always that sneaky bastard that keeps his fin below the water line right he's smart or somebody's on their phone while they're in the water <laughs> that's just stupid <laughs> <laughs> There's but so that, many things. But I, there's definitely people would be doing that uh, i've seen it so, yeah. i've seen a it. selfie with the shark Someone yeah tries to do that <laughs> Well, and that was New Vine Reacts. <laughs> that was New Vine Reacts. Wow. Burr, cool. burr, 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 burr. We're getting really good at this. <laughs> yeah. Reactive. That was fun. Great job. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. yeah. Cool. <laughs> you did. You, I can tell you did radio. I did a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. Um, okay. I did some uh, interviews back in the day with Dave Fresina on Soundcheck in Syracuse. Mm-hmm. 
And uh, when I was in my other bands, I was always worried about, you know, making sure people come out to the shows. So I would always book myself on radio programs that would have interviews like this. Um, okay. Of course, now today it's podcasts, yeah. which I like yeah. because you now you're on video too mm -hmm. and you have unlimited time and you can say, Fuck. You can. That's right. That's very true. <laughs> we, We've uh, we, we encouraged that. To that sometimes. Uh -huh. yeah. Now, we'll bleep them out on the promos, you know. Yeah. But then <laughs> if you want the real deal, you can just listen to the show. Check right. It. We have an E by every podcast. I had a friend of mine say he won't listen to it because of that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh. His loss. It is. Or her loss. His. Okay. I, but you know what? Yeah. And and that's okay. You know, I, I, if if it doesn't do right for you, then, then you don't listen. And that's the sometimes, beauty of having, you know, yeah. freedoms. You just have to say fuck sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. Oh, it's, shit. It's, yeah. yeah, exactly. I'm going to eat a fish. Speaking yeah. of sharks. Do it. So there you go. Tell us about an awkward story on the road. Hmm. Let go. me think. <laughs> let me think. Uh, that's a good question. I knew this question was coming, too, because I was watching your podcast last night. <laughs> yeah. uh, awkward on the moment of uh, when you have the one fan that really 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 wants to give you a hug mm. oh and they're very sweaty <laughs> at the That's end a of the show awkward. and, and you, you see love them this coming person. at you and you're like oh yeah. no yep he probably and, knows who he is right now oh <laughs> or her but <laughs> at the same time you love this person yeah. and you appreciate them so much and you're just like hey oh yeah, yeah. you put up the hand for yeah. the uh the handshake or the fist bump nowadays with the pandemic or something like that and you're just like okay i'll accept it okay I have no choice. Thank you for the hug. I love mm. you too. Okay. Anybody right. got a towel? <laughs> <laughs> that's, um, that's as far a good as one. Uh, yeah. awkward moments on the road, another one would be probably, you know, um, when I can't communicate with a sound guy because my microphone is off or when there's a drummer curse too. I don't know if this is really an awkward moment, but the drummer curse might be, you know this too. Every picture of the band has... The drummer's face is behind a cymbal, or there's fog. <laughs> That's true. Or there's something in front of the drummer's face. Not that I really care about people seeing my face, but mm. it's the curse. And it's a little awkward because people always forget, oh, the drummer also sings. <laughs> wait, wait, it's the like a monster. sings? Yep. Oh, you're singing. Uh, oh, I do wow. backups. Oh, nice, yeah. dude. Cool, cool. Yeah. That's like double duty, man. That's yeah. uh, two jobs in one. You deserve, yeah. you deserve a good photo op. Oh, uh, yeah? If you're singing. Yeah. There's a couple of really good pictures out there of me, I'll have to say. A it, couple. A couple. Just a couple. <laughs> 25 years and, wait, six years. Yeah. <laughs> and only two. two wait, two but there's pictures. a really good video of a drum solo that you take. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You yeah. must be talking about the uh, the one from Great Blue Heron Festival, right? That was the one that I heard. Um, it was like, you didn't have double kick, did you? No. It sounded no. a little bit like you did. It was just like rapid fire 16th mm -hmm. notes at one point on the toms, maybe. Between Perhaps. the toms and the snare. Yeah. Um, like I, the bottom if, triplets, maybe, or something? Yes. Okay. The dribble on the foot. Yeah. Okay, okay. Like good times, bad times, as a on the kick drum. But it's just one kick drum. A lot of good energy on that. Thank you so much. That's a cool trick. Man. Town pants, man. Yeah. Come and see us. We're going to be around upstate New York all this month. Um, probably going to be okay. a huge party. Yeah. So definitely come. We've had a few already. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nice. Uh, we'll be at Buffalo Irish Festival if okay. this comes out before then. Um, where else? You'll have to go to our website. Um, you can look me up at jefftripleydrums.com to all see right. all the tour dates on there and to hear the music and watch my YouTube videos. I do a lot of stuff on my YouTube videos. Um, because Butch Norton has been my mentor, he sends me a lot of practice exercises. I was just going to ask if you're keeping up on mm. lessons or chops. Oh yeah. Or oh, yeah. You're still in that. Thank you, Butch. Because he's become like the person that makes me practice creativity. Mm. Um, so he's a very renowned session drummer, as well as Lucinda Williams on the road and the Eels and all that's Tracy Chapman, mm. um, yeah. uh, Rufus Wainwright. Oh, yeah. So he, his thing is practice creativity. And what he means is play the same song as many different ways as you can. Okay. So I'll do four or five different kinds of grooves or for takes. And you can choose whichever one you want, wow. you know, and uh, thinking outside the box, like uh, using a cymbal in my left hand instead of a stick and playing that on the snare drum like it's a stick. Like uh, like using like a little splashy cymbal yep. to play? Yeah. Uh. Yeah. 
This is really good stuff. Uh, and I think it points to a larger theme, which is practice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, you know, no matter how good you are or you think someone else is like right. they're practicing, you're practicing, like you have to keep that up. I, I oh love yeah. That. It's so important. Yeah. I've, I've kind of fallen prey to like kind of falling out of it at times. And, mm -hmm. and it's like, you do, you do lose yes. a little bit oh, yeah. of your stuff mm -hmm. and it's yeah. not as clean. It's not as well oiled. Right. So whatever you do, mm. practice. Continue, continue to practice. I love yeah. that. Um, and I love those moments of inspiration when you want to get that yeah. going. Yeah. Uh, I was I was just telling Fish, I was hanging out at, you know, a local music shop. I think it's Music City down in Vestal. Yeah. And you know, Flea pops up, you know, Red yeah. Hot Chili, Pe Chili Peppers track, and I'm just like, you know, I'm playing bass in bands right now, and I'm I'm just like, you know, I think I'm I want to get lessons. You yeah, know, I want to start. Cool. I want to go yeah. back. I want to go back to that, even though I'm playing all the time. Uh, there's another guy who uh, you all know, Michael Wu. He he takes lessons, yeah. and he's one of yeah. the best guys. I mean, he's an he's in great demand. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but he's taking lessons from some dude, and I just think that inspiration is is what you got to pay attention to. Yeah, you practice know? is everything because you know what about happy mistakes? Mm -hmm. That happens too. A lot of that's on my record. Mm -hmm. Like with improvising, you're like, oh. What was that? That was cool. I think I'll do that again. Maybe mm -hmm. I'll refine that and develop it. Mm -hmm. You don't get that unless you practice. Yeah. Right. And another story that uh, Butch told me about Neil Peart before he passed away. Mm -hmm. God rest Neil Peart's soul. Yeah. Uh, he was going around to every drum teacher in L.A. freaking out because he was wondering what happened to his groove. Mm -hmm. Where did his groove go? He's studying with guys like Peter Erskine. How Neil Peart got his groove back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The drummer's new groove. Yeah. Yeah. And it just it goes to show that it's all groove and feel. Yes, so there's he, chops he was, too, but... He was going back to those guys and yeah. working with them to get uh, like lessons. Yeah. And of Neil course... Peart. Yeah. Neil Peart. Especially if you think about when he was working with Freddie Gruber mm -hmm. during the test for Echo Days. Uh, he went off the road for a long time when his wife and his daughter passed away. Mm. When he came back, he studied with Freddie Gruber. So it just goes to show you, no matter... Who you who who you are as a drummer? Where you've been? Where you've been? What you know? There's always somebody that can show you something else I that you don't that. know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, always learning. So Jeff, tell us tell us what drives you to continue doing music as a career. Well, you know, it's just who I am. I've been playing drums for almost thirty years. I don't know anything else. Literally, <laughs> mm. I can't go out and get a regular job. <laughs> I'm unemployable. I kind of get that. Yeah. Yeah. And what keeps mm -hmm. me going, too, is being able to just be creative and be myself. Mm -hmm. I love being weird, and I love doing weird things. Mm -hmm. So, you know, not too weird, but... <laughs> Tell the world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but what keeps me going, too, is being able to... Really, the big payoff for me is when people come up and they say, you really influenced me as a musician, mm -hmm. or you know, you've changed my day or you changed my life or something like that. Yeah. To me, that's the big payoff. Most of all, right. Is the reaction that you give to other people to do better really in their is. lives. Yeah. It is. When someone walks up to you and tells you what a great job you did and it really impacted them musically, it's, there's nothing better. Yeah, absolutely. I, I know that feeling. It's, it's, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So where will you be next? Mm -hmm. Where can we find you online? Where, uh, Believe it or not, we're coming to a close here. Wow, this went by fast. It did. It, it's it, the fish. It's the sign of <laughs> the, these fish. Not, not <laughs> oh, I was like, <laughs> it's it's the sign it's, of a good conversation. Yeah, mm -hmm. thank you for having me. Uh, yeah. Yes, yes, absolutely. So, what's yeah. next for you, and where can we listen to your material? Do the whole spiel, and okay. then and then John sure. will will take us out with some more some more information about New Vine. And yep. cool. Well, I'll be playing this weekend with the Town Pants. On Friday, July 29th, we'll be at Climbing Binds in Penyan, New York. On the 30th, Saturday, we'll be at Buffalo Irish Festival. Mm -hmm. And on Sunday, the 31st, we'll be at Harbor Fest in Oswego. So if any of my Syracuse people are out there, this is your last chance to come see us. Harbor Fest, Sunday, 2 o'clock. Okay. Be there. Awesome. And you can find out all this stuff about me on jefftripolydrums.com. Mm -hmm. We got some cool, cool ass stickers. Here. Cool. Yeah. And... <clears throat> this this uh, Wabi Sabi, this is available Bandcamp? Yes. Okay. It will also be available August 1st on every, um, you know, Spotify, all that stuff. But just go to my website. Mm -hmm. It's perfect. You can just listen to it there or you can, you know, download it if you want. Yeah. So 
Yeah. Well, please check it out, everybody. It's uh, it's an amazing. Uh, from what we've heard here today, I got to still check it out, but it's amazing and what he put into it. Oh yeah. Uh, you got to listen to this album. Thank you so much. Yeah. It'll get you in touch with your roots and like like I said, the tribal yeah. aspect of it. Mm -hmm. That yeah. was really like you put it on. For me, the car ride is a great place to listen while you're driving because like no lyrics and just those driving rhythms. Yeah, right. and then, thank you. And then headphones if you want to go get all the in. car ride right test. The car ride is that. Yeah. yeah, that's how you know. Yeah, yeah. You and know. also that's kind of how I mastered some of it was, you know, listen to it in the car. In the car. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In the car. Well, thanks, Jeff. Really appreciate you being here. Thank um, you for having me. If you all don't know, uh, we are a not-for-profit 501c3 New Vine Records was established in 212. And we've been doing this for about 10 years. We've raised money for, for new artists, cool. you know? Nice. Uh, there's not a whole lot of mechanism out there. We talk about it all the time. We provide resources. We provide awareness. And we provide opportunity for new artistry. Um, if you want to check us out, go to newvinerecords.com. And if you want to support us, go to newvinerecords.com and hit the donate button. You can do it monthly or you can do a one-time gift. And it all goes straight to the artist. Uh, also, check us out on YouTube. Check us out on Spotify and cool. Apple Podcasts. That's where you'll find these. And please subscribe. Tell your friends. Tell them this is an encouraging podcast because I think it is. I think it is too. You enjoy yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. And we've yeah. been getting some emails about that. So thank yeah. you for who are listening. And uh, again, uh, the YouTube uh, that we have up, subscribe to that. Yep. And lastly, we have Off the Vine, September 17th. We have a uh, festival where the Gun Poets are headlining. Yay, I love the Gun Poets. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. It's at Treman State Park and you can stay overnight. Um, but it's a one-day festival, and we have uh, Lucky Hair Brewing, and we also have South Hill Cider. They're going to be there. It's only 20 bucks. That's a great price. And it's an yeah. awesome location. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And Sound on Sound is going to do the sound, so we're going to have some pro sound, and it's just going to be a fun time. So yeah. check it out. And everybody, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. All right. Goodbye. That guy. Awesome. That yeah. studio is full of stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's a collector. That's why they call him the mole. <laughs> he, yeah. He's just, he's got uh, the Neve board, which is bigger than this board. He had the MCI when it was in there. Did he? Yeah. Yeah. Now, That's awesome, man. He's got a, he was kind of scary. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's quite a guy. There, there were these kids screaming outside the studio. And he literally <laughs> went into a tirade. Yeah. And like a murderous tirade about what he would do to the children if they didn't leave. <laughs> that sounds like mole. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's pretty funny. You should have seen him. Oh, oh my God. I'm, just, I'm like processing that. Oh, these yeah. fucking kids what are going to go out and destroy happening? them. And he looks like Sam Kininger. It, yeah, he does. Yeah. He's, he's got this look. He looks like a mole. <laughs> he looks kind of like a mole. Holy yeah, shit. he did the mixing on Wabi Sabi. Cool. And. I got to give a shout out to him. Well, every he time job. I go to any store in that town to try to find like gear, it's like, no, the mole got here. Yeah. He bought it up. <laughs> yep. Yeah. yeah. I see him. When I used to work at Guitar Center, he'd come in and be like, what you looking for this time? <laughs> come buy a kick drum pedal for me. <laughs> <laughs>